and welcome to this video. Here you see a four-wheel combination padlock of the Spanish brand Amic. It's not totally well made, as you can see from the different depths of these cutouts, but it's an interesting lock to decode because it has four skates. In this video I want to take the opportunity to first explain how these locks actually work in general and why they can be decoded. Then I want to explore the very special gate situation on this lock. And finally I want to decode this lock without applying the special knowledge. So let's start with explaining how these locks work. So you can see the shackle which is currently uh, pulled out. And the part that goes inside the lock looks similar to this. So that's a big bolt from a, a bicycle lock and you can see the teeth. And these teeth interact with the inner wheels of the lock. So this lock has, uh, has outer wheels and inner wheels. And that's because you can change the combination on these locks. So when you turn the shackle at 180 degree, push it inwards, you disengage the outer from the inner wheel so that turning the outer wheel doesn't move the inner wheel and you can change it to a new number. So move it back to zero. I have also a, a wheel that belongs to this bolt, that's the inner wheel. And if we ignore these bumps here, we can see three um, actual elements. One is the rim, then we have the big cutout here, which is called the true gate, and we have a smaller uh, cut out, which is not quite wide, is that one, which is called the false gate. And now if we insert the bolt here, we can see when it is, when the wheel is turned at the position where the tooth of this bolt um, is uh, on the rim, um, the bolt cannot be retracted. But if it reaches the point where it goes to the uh, gate, you can see it goes through and that's actually the only right position of the wheel. If you turn it uh, to the false gate, the false gate is wide enough so that the wheel catches at that position, but it's not wide enough for the bolt uh, to be pulled out. So that's a security measure on these uh, locks with false gates, so that it's harder to find the the right place when it's being decoded. So why can we actually decode such kind of locks? That's because every mechanical um, system has imperfections and uh, these locks are made in a huge uh, yeah, in a huge number. So the cost is an important uh, factor and so the imperfections um, can be expected as uh, not marginal. So when we pull on the shackle we will cause uh, one of these uh, teeth to bind on a wheel and the imperfection causes one, one wheel to bind first and when we then turn this wheel we can feel something. We feel uh, the resistance um, that the tooth um, provides when we when it um, when it uh, moves along the rim, and we feel something different when it comes to a gate, true or false gate. Yeah, and then uh, we move it hopefully to a true gate, and continue with the next wheel that binds. Because if you turn the wheel to a gate, true or false gate, the shackle comes out just a little bit further so that the next wheel binds more and so you can um, improve um, the gate situation on all these wheels and if the lock doesn't open yeah, you have to start again from the beginning search for a wheel that's in a 
false gate and not in a true gate, and so on and so forth, until finally the lock will open. Alright, so before I start decoding this lock, I want to uh, explore the very special uh, gate situation on this lock. And therefore I keep all the wheels um, at the open position and only change the numbers of one wheel at a time. So I want to start with the last wheel and therefore I close the lock and turn it to the next position and apply uh, tension on the shackle. So now I apply tension on the shackle yeah, and uh, move that wheel and it can be moved and I feel resistance on this on this wheel but it's kind of a yeah constant uh, resistance without any changes. If I loosen up the tension wheel turns more easily so that's clear you can um, uh, change the resistance on the wheel by applying more or less a pull-out tension on the shackle. So continue and it's all the same uh, feeling all around until zero is reached again. So the last wheel has this type of um, gate layout. It has only one true gate at zero. Alright, now I want to analyze the gate situation on this wheel. So I close the lock again, turn it to the next position, pull in the shackle and move it, but it cannot be moved. So it stops here and as the lock is not open, this tells me that's a false gate. I release tension, move it further, turn it, turn it, turn it, until it stops again, this time in between 6 and 7. So it's another false gate here. Release tension, move it further. Yeah, And you ha really have to take care that you don't change other wheels when um, when uh, yeah when changing your your current wheel, okay. So apply tension, move it, move it, move it, and it stops here between three and four. Release tension, move it further. Apply tension again, move, move it. Stops here at one. It's also false gate. Release tension, move it, move it, and it opens again on the only one and true gate. So the gate situation on that wheel is as displayed here, one true gate at zero, false gates at uh, nine and one, uh, directly connected to the one true gate, and also false gates in between two numbers, six and seven and three and four. So if we knew that from that lock, and would take advantage from uh, from this um, gate layout. We could do the following: if we encounter a, if we play with a wheel uh, with this layout, we know that if we uh, hit the uh, we if we hit a gate, then it's a true gate. If we uh, play with this wheel and if we hit a gate uh, that's in between two numbers we for sure know that it's a false gate and if it's a uh, if it's a number not in between but if it's if it's a number then we are searching for the number where left and right is another gate so if we take advantage of this then we are pretty quickly done with this lock because um, the way these uh, gates are assigned to the wheels uh, repeat, so we have the same uh, type of gates here and there, and the same type of gates here and there. But now I want to uh, decode this lock without applying the special knowledge. Give you general um, approach what to do. So shuffle the wheels. Just make sure that a number is entered and not in between two numbers. Close it again, shuffle the wheels and start with the fun part. 
Okay, I apply tension and search for the first binder. So this one binds, uh, this one binds more. So wheel number four is the first binder, apply tension, move it, move it, move it, and it stops here. So this could be a gate or a false gate in general. Now I move on to the next wheel that binds, and it's wheel number three. So apply tension, move it, and it stops here, in between two numbers. Um, so we know what we would do if we knew um, this uh, special gate layout. But move on to the next wheel, and it doesn't really bind well. So it stops here, but it's not a good binder. And that's one um, one method to detect false gates. If the next binding wheel is not binding very well in a gate from the previous binding wheel, and if you change that wheel to another gate and then the next binding wheel is the next binding wheel is binding more, you have improved the gate situation on that wheel. But we will do that uh, maybe a little bit later. So it stops here at 8 and now I changed position on the last wheel and it's it's really not binding very well. It's actually pretty loose although I apply a lot of outward uh, tension on this on the shackle and I just search for yeah some place where it could be uh, in a gate. All right, so now we have this situation. All wheels are at some gate and the lock is not open. So I start over again with the first wheel, move it away from the gate, apply tension and turn it. And it stops again at seven. So this wheel has only one true gate. And um, now I want to um, apply a different method um, that can be used to detect false gates. You apply tension and you change um, that wheel and move it left and right and try to feel what's going on. So there is one, um, one problem with this method because the inner wheel and the outer wheel are not uh, tightly connected. So there's a little bit of play. And if you take this play as movement of the inner wheel, you are wrong. So you have to move it. So this, this, this movement is actually um, the play both wheels have against each other. So you have to move it to the very, um, to one direction until it stops without any further pressure. And then you move it just a little bit and you feel what's going on with the inner wheel. And I can feel resistance on the inner wheel. And so I know that this is a false gate. So you have seen with that example here, um, if you are in a true gate, you have a little bit of play. And this is independent from the uh, pressure you apply to the bolt. So that's, that's the other method. Um, so I release tension and move it further and it stops here at 7. So for now I leave it at that position but of course we know that the first um, binder which is not in between two numbers is a false gate but the next is a true gate. So for the purpose of demonstration I leave it at this position and move on to the next wheel. So the next wheel is not binding really really good. It's it's binding pretty loose and so this these two wheels feel not really uh, yeah it's not a satisfying um, play with these wheels. There's no good um, yeah good decision uh, where you could rely on which number is, is the best. So maybe seven isn't the right gate and I move it further to 6. 6 is also a gate, but now let's check um, wheel number 2 
and it's binding much more. So changing wheel number 3 to the next position has caused the shackle to come out a little bit further so that it now can bind on that wheel more. So now I can really feel very well resistance here uh, and it's open. So 4 was uh, already a true gate here and we have taken some uh, methods to find out uh, so to differentiate between a true and a false gate. This doesn't always work like shown here in this perfect manner. If a lock has more precision it's more difficult but these are general approaches uh, on these kind of locks. For me they are black boxes where you can apply some um, inputs like pulling out the shackle, turning the wheel and you can uh, feel the response visually um, by feeling and by hearing. And you have to draw your conclusions from what you see, hear and feel. And if you, if you draw the right conclusions the lock will finally open. You have to take care not to modify um, accidentally other wheels while turning one wheel. You have to uh, think of that there is a little bit of play between the inner wheel and the outer wheel, so you have to move the wheel slightly to one position and then move it with a little bit uh, increased force. So you don't, uh, you should never uh, take the play between the inner and the outer wheel as an indication for what's going on in this lock. You have the possibility um, to change one wheel from a false gate or from, from a gate to another gate and detect what's going on on the, on the next binder and you can move left and right to detect um, if it's in a true or false gate. So that's uh, basically everything I can tell you about how to defeat this kind of locks. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, decoding session. Um, yeah, happy picking and decoding. Thanks for watching and bye bye.